folks welcome to paisa paisa i am your host anupam gupta b50 on twitter and this is the true beacon special as that name specifies we are going to talk about a very interesting really interesting asset management company and a fintech startup that was founded to create wealth and value for those who believe in india's growth future my guest nikhil kamath co-founder and cio true beacon and of course zeroda regular listeners of paisa paisa would remember that we had nikhil's brother nitin nitin kamath on paisa paisa back in 2018 to talk to us about zeroda nikhil is going to tell us about true beacon nikhil nikhil welcome to paisa paisa yaar thank you so much for doing this for our listeners thank you anupam uh, thank you for having me Sure, I'm a big fan of Zero Da, Rain Matter, Fin Shorts, you know, and all the various funky stuff that mm-hmm. you guys are doing out of Bangalore. And there's always something happening, you know. There's always something interesting. But today's episode is about True Beacon. Okay, so give us a short version of True Beacon, how it was formed, what it's about, and we'll get into the large version after the break. Sure. So True Beacon is an asset management company. Uh, we put money into publicly traded large cap equity. focused on india this started when i was personally trying to allocate some money to a private bank and a wealth manager uh, i found a lot of inefficiencies in the model and we have tried to curtail and remove a lot of these inefficiencies with true beacon so think of it as a transparent uh, efficient cheaper uh, asset management company compared to peer uh, asset managers today focused on the ultra hni audience both in india and across the world very interesting so we'll get to that on the other side of this break but i want to spend some time now on what's happened in this last very very wild year you know because it's just some kind of bizarre stuff that's happening you're at a great vantage point to observe what all has gone down in this last year you know key trends key messages uh, we started off with the nifty down 40% now it's up 100% a lot of people came in open demat account trading accounts and now things are kind of stabilizing mm-hmm. let's walk through how you've observed this entire one year panning out and mm-hmm. then if you can make sense to us about what's happening say in the retail market probably with mm-hmm. the work that you guys are doing at zeroda and mm-hmm. with hni is an ultra hni is on the true beacon side let's let's talk a bit about that sure so anupam i think pre pandemic if you go back to jan or feb last year 2020 uh, the economy was slowing down uh, you know tax collections were uh, waning uh, we were seeing like a lower gdp number uh, things were generally going uh, down anyway things were slowing down i think the pandemic and the lockdown that it brought with it kind of exaggerated that trend and things kind of came to a standstill uh when the markets did recover i think they recovered much less on the fundamentals changing but more based on sentiment and money flow which was available because our western uh, peers were printing a lot of cash and a lot of that was trickling into our country as well uh that seems to have continued uh i think the correction was overdone as is the rally today uh, i think we've gotten to a point where things are very expensive at a 40 multiple uh, the large cap companies in india are trading at probably as expensive a point as i have ever seen them trade at you know and i've been trading for a long time like close to 20 years uh so i guess now is the time to stay cautious uh, now is the time to know that uh, everything is cyclical in the market things go up but they do come down after and they go up again so at this point in the cycle at current valuations i think caution would be best advised and for people to you know diversify not just inside of one asset class but between asset classes and to get some risk free stuff in there is probably a good idea so india offers a lot of great risk free assets you know you can buy tax free bonds you can fund the national highways or indian railway and we can get about 4 5% net of taxes i think it would be prudent to get that kind of exposure today and diversify maybe a certain part of your portfolio got it nikhil can you tell us something about behavioral changes right because you've been doing this for you know for for 20 years so far and a lot of people found a lot of 
unprecedented you, you get the word unprecedented thrown out thrown you know thrown around a lot in this last uh, in this last year um what is your perspective on this the number of dmat accounts that were opened possibly any behavioral changes from the hni side because for for example what i have been hearing is a lot of them got dissolution with mutual funds and went directly into stocks we've had quite a few wealth managers uh, on paisa paisa they have been telling us about some other trends um within both categories you know whether it is the retail whether it's the hni category anything that you want to add out here from your perspective from what you've seen in this last one year i mean are the retail guys more savvy have they done the right thing by opening dmat accounts has the trend stopped on the hni side what are you seeing let's talk a bit about that i think what the retail has done this time has actually been quite smart uh typically the retail does not make money uh, they come in after a rally or they come in uh, uh generally too late where there's not much left on the upside this time they came in mid crash i think a lot of them came in around 8000 9000 10000 nifty and they're all sitting on a good you know 30 40 50% 50% gain today uh it's probably one of the few times in history that the retail has come in directly and made a substantial sum of money uh great for the ecosystem overall because you know these people will go out and talk about it and they'll probably uh that one and a half percent which is the participation per percentage of uh, retail and you know the financial markets in india which is abysmally low will probably go up uh in terms of what the retail uh, demographics have been i would say uh, let's just talk about our clients for a sure. second i would say uh, the average age kind of dropped from 33 to about 30 during the pandemic so a younger investor came on board uh the average ticket size they came in with was about 80000 rupees per account uh in terms of the male female demographics we get about uh, 16 17% of the new audience as female and a vast majority continues to remain the male population uh why retail is disgruntled by asset managers and mutual funds i think it's uh, their own wrong doing mm. uh, over the last decade uh, these these guys have uh, riddled investors with so many fees you buy a fund the distributor charges you 1% or 2% the fund manager then charges you 2% a year if you make money if you don't make money Uh, there are lock-ins in place. If you want to take out your money early, you pay an exit loan. There is a setup fee. Uh, if you would just look at these fees in isolation, ignore everything else and look at that two percent a year. If you pay two percent every year for twenty years, if you make money or don't make money, that's half your portfolio that you're paid in fees. Mm. Uh, no fund manager can you know really predict what will happen tomorrow. Uh, yeah. We all are you know trying to do the best with. the same information we have at hand so i guess what the retail is doing by coming in directly is probably a wise thing to do considering the ecosystem sure. that has been around for the last decade or two okay anything on the hni side because uh, <laughs> it's kind of counterintuitive i've been told that wealth managers have had like a shower of money coming in in the last one year uh, despite businesses not doing great any 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 views on what you're seeing on the hni side the ultra hni side family office side anything sure so anupam one thing you have to bear in mind is we have to be cognizant to the fact that as a wealth manager we all have to say it if it's true if it's not true we have to say everything is good <laughs> we somehow think the future will also be good and people are very happy and clients are very happy often that is not truly the case uh on the retail side definitely mutual funds have seen significant outflow now the fees i spoke about on the mutual funds are only higher on the hni side uh there is a higher distribution fee there are more middlemen at play there is uh, less transparency there than even on the mutual fund side uh, the government typically comes and regulates the mutual fund product better because so many people are involved and they regulate the niche products available to the hni a little bit less so people can charge more Uh, but if i have to like compare the two uh, 
to different kind of people i would say the retail has seen a further outflow of money relative to uh, the hni the hni have actually added a little bit of capital hmm. folks we're going to take a small break out here uh, when we come back we're going to talk specifically about true beacon and the things that they do differently their track record what they've been up to so don't go anywhere we'll be right back and welcome back to this really special episode of pesa versus the true beacon special my guest nikhil kamath co-founder and ceo true beacon and zerodha nikhil welcome back now tell us i want to go into true beacon specifically right because you outlined the use case the problem that the asset management or the wealth management industry was facing in terms of higher fees lack of transparency and a lot of stuff i had a look at your website it's very very interesting can you tell our listeners how you do things differently and how you you fill in the gaps that you find that you found in wealth management let's start from there sure so when i was allocating my money onto a wealth manager i chose my private bank back in the day a couple of years ago and then i thought uh itna fee i mean after paying this much in fee how will i net make any alpha over the market the uh, most often in markets anupam nothing happens right like we have stellar years like the last 12 months and there is an up move and a down move but most often market stays in a range it stays in that 10% window on either side so i thought if that were to happen and history were to you know kind of repeat itself and we stay in that range the only person making money is the fund manager and the fund house uh, so we decided to create a product which is totally client aligned uh, we said we will not have any middlemen uh, we will not have any distributors uh, if you want to get onto the platform you have to see because out yourself and sign up uh, you say 1 2% there already Uh, we will not have a setup cost we will not have a lock in period so you can add money when you want you can withdraw money when you want without any kind of an exit load then we said let's get rid of the 2% annual management fee because if the client is not making money we should not keep charging him that 2% a year so we got rid of that as well uh, we went to the extent that we said zero ter so everything from there's no brokerage there is no demat fee there is no pledging cost custody accounting all of that is free the only thing we decided we will charge is a performance uh, based carry if you invest 100 unlike another asset manager all 100 goes into being invested and if the 100 becomes 110 at the end of the financial year after you have made money we will charge 10% of the profits as a fee that would be one out of the 110 with a high watermark level so we said let's try and be totally client aligned uh, this is really putting our next on the line because for any reason if the markets are in a bear uh, phase for you know 3 years or 4 years we have zero revenue as a company but we said okay we believe in the long term story of india we're willing to take that chance and that's how we structurally differentiated uh, that was step 1 step 2 was to make it a lot more transparent uh, typically in a cat 3 alternate investment fund which is the product pr it's the only license the most sophisticated one the indian regulator gives where you have the ability to hedge 100% so if my long portfolio is 100 i can cover the downside risk up until 100% and have a net market neutral strategy uh typically in a fund at a, in a product like this you know there uh, there are other fees that one has to kind of like you know factor in as well but we've removed all of that in terms of uh, transparency uh, you would in any other aif get what your nav is your aum is once in a month where an excel report is sent to you by your relationship manager here we have created a dashboard where you can log in at any point on a daily basis see where your money is invested track it on a live basis and if you want to take out your money you don't have to call a rm and sell him why you need your money you just hit a button and the money goes to your account so we are trying to be cheaper by mm-hmm. virtue of getting rid of all the fees we are way cheaper and more efficient by uh, how lean we are as an organization in terms of transparency even i think we are a lot more transparent because we put all the data out there for people to access when they desire versus them having to reach out to someone and request for that data okay uh nikhil for the benefit of our listeners if you could just explain the various products on the wealth management side right i mean you are a cat 3 af 
Mm-hmm. Uh, where does that start? That's I think starts from a PMS, right? Then you've got what Cat one, Cat yeah. two, Cat three. So you just just walk our listeners through these various things and the minimum entry criteria. Like a, a PMS is now fifty lakhs, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So mutual fund is the very vanilla product, right? There is no minimum. You can invest even a thousand rupees. Uh, it's a pooled investment vehicle. Uh, no minimums, but very very vanilla in the way it works. That you can only typically capture the upside. Uh, PMS is the next product where it used to be 25 lakhs minimum. Now it's 50 lakhs minimum. Uh, here it's not a pooled investment vehicle. So if you are 10 different clients, your money is not aggregated like a mutual fund. Here each portfolio is managed separately. A little bit more sophisticated than mutual funds, but still does not allow for you to hedge the ma- in the manner that a Cat 3 AIF would. Then come the alternate investment funds. There's Cat 1, 2, 3. Cat one and two are more for venture capital firms, PEs, REITs, uh, a lot of private placement. Cat two allows for you to do 50% public and 50% private, but uh, these are typically locked in funds with a minimum lock in of six, seven years and beyond that. Uh, a Cat three AIF is an equity only kind of fund. Wow. Here you have the ability to hedge 100%. The minimum investment is a crore versus 50 lakhs in a PMS. And uh, these typically tend to be the kind of products where you will have arbitrage funds or hedge funds or things which will, uh, a lot of really interesting fixed income products are here, wherein there's no underlying market risk, but you can make 8 9% using an arbitrage bike. Okay. And you said a crore is a minimum ticket size, right? A crore is a minimum. And when you said equity, do you mean listed or there's unlisted also? Only listed equity in a cat. Okay, and Cat one and Cat two unlisted. unlisted. Cat three is only listed. And Cat three so, can do cash, derivatives, everything. 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 As, okay, as as long as it's listed or it's liquid, right? Because Cat yeah. one, Cat two is not that liquid. Cat three is more yeah. liquid, right? Yeah. So, so our, our you... mandate is uh, more like large cap equity. So we do. We are a long short fund trying to beat the Nifty by ten percent. Uh, by 6%. So what we are trying to do is, you know, achieve the risk profile. If the markets go up 10%, we want to be up six or seven. If the markets go down 10%, we want to be down three or four. So it makes it a very conservative fund, which is very apt for the times that we live in today. But over the long-term period, over a multi-year period, we hope to outperform the Nifty by about 6%. Sure. I was just going to get into that because you've, you know, so far you, whatever you've done, it's, it's definitely working. Your track record is there uh, for everyone to see. So tell us about processes uh, and performance and your track record and how exactly do you go about achieving your goals? Yeah, sure. So I think it's, it's the entire intent is to keep things very simple. We have two buckets in our portfolio. About 60% is very passive, long only. We stick to the nifty companies, which are the 50 largest companies in India. We don't do any mid cap or small cap. Uh, We feel that compliance and governance in these 50 companies are at a certain standard, which the larger mid cap universe is not able to match in many ways. Uh, the balance 40% of the portfolio is very mathematically driven. It's a long shot portfolio, which does well when volatility either spikes, that's when the markets go up and down or correct significantly. So that acts as a hedge on the balance portfolio. Here we run strategies around uh, mean regression, correlation. Uh, we do things like pair trading, delta hedging, everything which typically does well when volatility spikes in the market. What we're aiming to achieve is a combination of these two strategies to give us a 6% alpha over what the Nifty does. The Nifty has traditionally done about 10, 11% a year over the last 10, 20 years. So we hope to be able to retain, uh, to return the 16, 17% kind of risk return profile. So okay. that is the fun. Sure. Okay. Uh, so one question that comes up, do you have a process for mapping out the 60% long only portfolio? Or for example, are you sector specific? Are you value? Are you growth? Do you run screens? Or what What would be the criteria there? I would say all of the above, but we're very top down. So we pick sectors first. We have a six member research team. Uh, so each person kind of specializes in a particular sector. As a theme, we kind of shy away from PSUs a lot because they're very uh, very 
respond to what happens with regulation and government in the country and we can't control that but we would first allocate what allocation we want for which sector over the next 5 years or 10 years and then we have many screens which filter out the stocks that we like and the ones we don't like okay and for the for the balance 40% long shot hedging that you do are you open you know are you open to say something like special situations or do you have some kind of a philosophy there also that we'll do this but we will not do that well typically we don't take directional bets there uh, we take a lot of uh, i'll give you an example if you we were to be doing a pair trade let's say infosys and tcs have had a certain correlation for the last 10 years let's assume it's 1 as to 1.2 uh for some reason say there's a whistle blower news on infosys and that uh, correlation is kind of it uh, it goes away from the average so we would buy one short the other one waiting for them to converge to the mean again that would be an example of a pair trade so we do plenty of stuff like that sure. uh, depending on what market conditions exist at that time we deploy the strategies we think would do better at that point great so you've got a quantish kind of an approach to that entire piece that's right okay last two questions now nikhil the first mm-hmm. is very obvious one that i think you would be getting from your friends and family and i keep on getting a lot from mm-hmm. uh people uh you know on on social media on uh on my podcast what next what 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 happens to equities and i'm only talking equities out here where do mm-hmm. we go from here in terms of your long term outlook and what do people do with their portfolios because people are sitting on book profits some of us are stopping their sip some of us are continuing the sip some people are selling stocks some people are doing absolutely nothing <laughs> what would you tell someone new to the market who's actually made a lot of money mm-hmm. and wants to stay in for the long term do you have anything to tell him here and second to someone who's brand new who's actually mm-hmm. entering the market and is a little bit worried So first category mm-hmm. someone who's made profits second category someone who's just coming what's your advice to them so someone who's made profits i would say book uh, maybe not the whole thing but book a significant portion of it and someone who's just coming in i would say things are too expensive don't buy today yeah. where would you send him then i mean would you tell him to go in a debt mutual fund or an fd or i don't know mm-hmm. bitcoin i, say- <laughs> <laughs> I saw it tweets on bitcoin but yeah, yeah. sorry probably not bitcoin i think uh-huh. that's also inflated uh i i mean this is not something that people usually recommend but i think physical gold is actually a great hedge against many of the things which are not working in the world today be it, uh be it like you know aggressive central banks bitcoin currency devaluation uh to a large extent you know you can kind of equate why equities have rallied with the fact that currency has actually devalued but it's not reflected in the price yet price is yet uh, so so gold actually acts as a good hedge so i would definitely recommend for people to you know i mean the government hates this idea because we don't have any of our own gold in india and we have to you know import everything especially the stuff we buy physically hmm. uh, which unlike a sovereign gold bond or something it has to be physically present but i think that's a good hedge Uh, sure. for somebody to hold but uh, see real estate is more inflated than equity even at this point two and a half percent rental yields in the country outside of the whole cultural phenomenon where your mother and your father want you to own a house and have a kid and a wife to feel settled logically mathematically it makes zero sense yeah. to buy a home right at two and a half percent if i'm going to live or for live 40 50 years more Sorry. i'd always rather rent than buy So I would definitely not recommend putting money into real estate. I would say create a combination. Maybe right now the 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 entire demographic of India is very real estate heavy. Uh, maybe seventy percent of a middle class households asset base is real estate. The home they own, the loan they hold on. Maybe bring that down to thirty forty percent. Don't have more than thirty percent in equity, and the balance can be a mix of you know risk free fixed income like tax free bonds. and a commodity like gold or silver very interesting take okay, a last question uh, this is like a checklist for our listeners who are going mm-hmm. out and looking for wealth managers because probably you know there is a lot of demand out there what yeah. would you tell them you know what what should they look out for what are maybe three four questions that they should ask all their wealth managers before giving them money and choosing the right one well step number 1 would be to make sure the middleman is not making any money the guy selling you the fund 
uh, this could be your bank this could be a wealth advisor this could be anybody now when you're already paying a fund manager to manage your money i don't think you should be paying a third party to introduce you to that fund manager a little bit of research online you will find who has a good track record who doesn't you don't need that guy in between so definitely try and eliminate that uh b when you go to the fund manager definitely figure out what exactly he's charging you often people often people hide uh, fees and charges you know ask him for like a contract note or ask him for uh, you know some other client's exact fee structure that has been charged in a year and compare head to head who has charged what because this happens a lot in a firm people say they charge 2% but they end up charging 3 3.5% and that kind of skews the whole thing so go into the details figure out exactly what he's charging that would be b and c i think in my personal opinion this might not be right but in my personal opinion i think stick to large cap especially in india shy away from those small cap companies those funds which have too much mid cap exposure these have high deltas you know they go up a lot when markets go up they fall a lot when markets fall but as a retail investor i think you're better placed sticking with the largest of companies we are much like a 90s russia you know the large we are very i wouldn't like to say the word crony capitalist but uh, proximity to power definitely aids while a company is scaling so the largest companies in the country will probably continue to scale at a pace faster than smaller ones which do not have that proximity to power so try to stick to large cap funds as much as possible and shy away from the mid cap ones and d maybe look for a open ended product with zero exit loads uh, nobody has seen tomorrow if the pandemic has taught us one thing it's how unpredictable life is uh, for you to access your capital tomorrow in adversity or in a time of crisis you should not be paying 3 4 5% of the value of that money you know just to get access to that money negotiate that down and try to get into open ended very interesting and finally where can we reach out to you if there is a listener out here who has a crore to give you how how does he start the process well they can go to uh, truebeacon.com uh, the, the website would be the easiest way or you know i'm on social media on instagram nikhil kamath cio you can reach out to me there sure but for uh, for truebeacon stuff i think truebeacon.com would probably be the best fantastic so <laughs> nikhil thank you so much for your time i hope to have you back sometime in the future on the show Thank you, Anupam. It was lovely chatting. Thanks a lot. So, folks, that is a wrap on this episode of Pesa Pesa. My guest, co-founder and CIO of True Beacon and Zeroda Nikhil Kamath. If you like this episode, don't forget to check out other interesting episodes on the IBM Network. You can listen to us on the IBM Podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are IBM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am your host, Anupam Gupta B50 on Twitter. And thank you so much for listening to Pesa Pesa.